Hello everyone, this is John Mark Johnson Jr. again, and this is another reply for uh, Jason, the fellow that I was talking with earlier, um, that is last week. Uh, Jason has responded on Facebook, and um, we've <laughs> more or less uh, come to the conclusion that we're certainly not going to convince each other, but there's at least points of discussion here, things that um, probably are worth addressing, especially for anyone who would be reading these things, watching these things. And so I'm going to go ahead and take the time to, to participate in that way. And uh, so let's go ahead and read uh, Jason's post here, and then I'll go ahead and give my response just as I did before. Let's see here. Uh, he says, well, John, as we have agreed, you and I aren't going to change each other's minds. It's obvious that you make every every effort to understand the scriptures, and for that I applaud you. I wish more people had that kind of dedication, and I apologize that you feel I have been confronting or contending with you about your slash mine beliefs. The last thing I wanted was that, and I tried my best to avoid it. As I said before, Jason, contending for the faith for a biblical historical Christian is a good thing. Okay, the fact that you jumped into this conversation uh, tells me something about what you're feeling about this in your heart. That is, I don't think you would have participated in this conversation unless you thought that it was significant, that there was something that was at stake here. Obviously, you don't have any intention of changing, and you seem to recognize that I'm not going to be changing, but that it was significant for people to see both sides of this, that it is an important issue. And contending for the faith is all about that. It is about presenting the facts to people and making sure that people understand, you know, all sides of the dynamic. Now, and ultimately it's in God's hands as to who uh, is going to respond to those kinds of declarations and who is not. But that is what contending for the faith is from a biblical historical perspective, from a Reformed Christian's perspective. You want people to know the truth, you present the truth very carefully, and you make sure that you do go into those situations where the truth is in contest and you make sure that you say your piece. Doesn't mean you're going to convince everyone, no, but you want to make sure that it gets out there. And I think, Jason, that's what you were doing. And I do not take any offense uh, whatsoever for someone who chooses to contend in that way to make sure that people know where they stand. Okay, frankly, we live in a day and an age where not everyone is very clear about where they stand. And I am so appreciative of the fact that you are. All right. Let's see here. The fundamental difference between us appears to be that I believe in the ability to receive knowledge and instruction from God personally, and it appears to me that you believe in order to find God, one must rely on the scriptures alone. Reformed Christian, sola scriptura, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's see here. Uh, while I believe in the sacredness and absolute necessity of studying the scriptures to understand God and his purpose for me, I also believe that he wants to hear from me that he listens and responds. That's what I meant about us not being able to change each other's minds. I believe he answered my questions about Joseph Smith, the Book of Mormon, and all the other things I've asked him about over the years. And because of those experiences, it doesn't matter to me what anyone might say or try to prove to me. I know what I felt, and I can't deny that. I guess you could say that the LDS philosophy can be summed up in James 1.5 and Proverbs 3.5-6. through 6. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God, and it shall be given him. And trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. The LDS believes strongly in the ability in the ability to talk to God and receive answers from him. I don't normally get into these kinds of discussions online. They just aren't real effective. Uh, but I appreciate the time and effort that you have put into your video. I understand you better, and I hope that you have a somewhat better understanding of me and my faith. Thank you, Jason, for that response. Um, and frankly, you're probably pretty much 100% uh, correct as far as pinning down what my core issue is when it comes to Mormonism. It really is an issue of what was first said in Scripture 
what Mormonism has come to teach. And they're not the same. Granted, they wouldn't be completely different at every single point, um, but we would both agree that biblical historical Christianity, as I'm presenting it, and Mormonism, as you're presenting it, are not the same. That's very obvious. And a lot of it has to do with using the Bible as a standard versus using things outside of the Bible as a standard. And you say, you know, Mormonism is very much so into um, the idea of uh, personal uh, revelation, the ability of, of us personally to be able to talk to God and receive answers from him. Um, but frankly, and please understand where I'm coming from this, uh, Jason. Okay. You say that you believe in the ability of God to personally answer you regarding these things, but frankly, you don't really. And here, let me show you, show you what I mean. Let's say you went into your ward one Sunday, and there was a new couple sitting there. You know, man, woman, sitting next to each other, all cutesy, obviously a couple. You sit down next to them, you start talk, uh, talking with a little bit, and you come to find out, that even though they're a very obvious couple, they're not married. Talk with them a little bit more, come to find out they're living together. Well, that's a problem. Because the LDS churches, the LDS church teaches that you are to be chaste before marriage, right? At least last time I checked, that was official LDS doctrine. But let's say they say to you, oh, we prayed about it. We received a revelation from God that this is okay for us. Yes, there's this rule that God gave officially to everyone in the church, but we are the exceptions to that rule. Would you believe them? Would you take their personal testimony that they prayed about and they've become convinced and they have a testimony in their heart of hearts that they are to live together despite not being married? Would you take that? I don't think you would. In fact, I think you would do quite the opposite. I think you would say that either the LDS church has already said what is right here or that you know, the prophets have spoken about this, whatever, you would already automatically look to an authority outside of the individual person, some kind of authority that was given to people in general, not to a specific person. You recognize that what comes to a specific person can be tainted by their own biases, that the probable reason why they got a testimony is probably because they really like having sex, but they don't really like commitment. You would recognize that. At least I hope you would. I hope that you would not accept that they're okay to do whatever they want to do as long as they prayed about it. I really do hope that's not where you would go. And the reason why I bring up that example is because I've known people like that. Okay, That happens in churches all across the United States. Um, you know, whether they're Reformed Christians like myself or not, or at least they claim to be Reformed Christians, but from the Bible I would have a standard for saying, no, this is not the biblical principle. The biblical principle is to flee sexual immorality. And I can point them back to Scripture and I say, no, this is the standard that was given long before you were even born, where God declared once and for all, this is what righteousness is, and this isn't what righteousness is. I can go ahead and take them back to the Old Testament, to the various uh, codes in the Pentateuch and the Torah, and I can go through and I can walk through with them line by line. This is what it says about these kinds of things, and I can go over what Jesus has to say in the New Testament. I can go to Scripture and say, this is the de uh, declaration for all God's people and you're not living in accordance with that, therefore you are wrong. And Jason, I think you would do the same. Maybe not necessarily with the Bible, uh, but you would use some kind of a standard outside of the personal. Okay, You would not accept it in practice. Okay, So don't tell me that you believe that the personal standard is such a high standard, because when it comes to it, within the context of your own church, if somebody tried to pull something like that, you would reject it immediately. Now let's step back. Okay, I'm a biblical historical Christian. We've been around for 2,000 years, as far as Christianity is concerned, because before that, God's people didn't call themselves Christians, because Christ hadn't come yet. But 2,000 years of Christianity in name, being uh, God's people all the way back to the beginning. And then some group comes along and they say, well, we've received a revelation from God that's our revelation and we've prayed about it and we've decided that this is what is true and we've all come to the same conclusion and we're standing back here saying, that's not what God, God's word says. Just like you would do with that young couple that should be married but isn't but still living together. You'd stand back and say, no, that's not what this church has been teaching from the beginning. That's wrong. 
Same thing for us. Okay. Do we believe that God works in people has lives personally and has the power to convince people personally? Obviously. Okay. But we don't believe that those kinds of personal revelations could ever supersede God's authoritative declarations that he's given ever since the beginning. That's what scripture is. It's the authoritative declaration for all. This is why Jude in Jude 1 3 says that we are con to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. Uh, some translations just say once, it's the Greek word hapax, and it is a finality statement in that context, so once for all is actually a very um, correct translation. The faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. It's final, it's complete. Whenever God says something, it is without emendation, and it's never going to contradict something that He said before. Like I said, you say you believe in the superiority of personal revelation, but frankly, you know that that's a cop-out. You know that it's a lazy way of being able to shut down the conversation and say, well, I believe this because I've prayed about it. I'm good. You know that that wouldn't fly within your own context. Like I said, that young non-married couple who's living together, if they came in and tried to pull that, you'd be on them in a heartbeat. At least I hope you would. Well, at least certainly your church would, right? They would be confronted about that and told that their personal revelation doesn't mean diddly squat. And that's the same thing that us on the outside are saying to the Mormons in general. You have this standard, but we know that it's a bunch of BS, for lack of a, a little bit more cordial way of saying it. It's a personal bias. You want to believe this. Just admit it. This is what you want to believe. You don't want to adhere to the biblical standard, Jason. Okay, no. I'm done being the angry biblical Christian. Thank you for listening, Jason. Okay, we know that we have different standards, obviously, and frankly, I don't consider your standard to be at all legitimate. Okay, and you probably don't like how blunt I'm being about it. And that's okay, we don't have to agree. Um, it is what it is on that one. Okay, I do honestly think that you're a nice guy. And I think that you are concerned about truth and contending for the truth, whether or not you would put it that way. But I think you're interacting here because you feel that there is something that is at stake here. And I hope you frankly think long and hard about that, Jason. Okay, the verses that you gave, as I've talked about in other uh, videos and dialogue with Mormons, you can look back through my stuff on YouTube. You know that that is not a sound exegesis of those passages. You know that James chapter 1 is talking about in the context of persecution. If you lack wisdom, then pray. And you know that Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 cannot be taken outside of the context of the rest of the Bible. That is a very short statement compared to passages that are much longer and much more precise about what ultimate standards are. Like, say, Psalm 119, for example, that talks very much so about Scripture and God's law and the revelation that is given authoritatively to all. Things like that. Um... And if you study church history at all, you would know the problem that Christians had with the Gnostics and why they didn't trust them. People who were basically claiming that they had special private revelation that was not the scriptural standard, that violated the scriptural standard. You know those things. Okay, You know that there's a problem with what you're saying, Jason. Okay, you, Not that you would believe what I believe, I understand that, but you know that this is a little bit weak. You know that it's not really going to convince me or anyone like me. But still you feel like you have to say this because you realize that if you don't talk in this context, that um, matters of truth are at stake. You get that. And I applaud you for that. Okay. Do you like arguing? Obviously you don't. Okay. And do I like arguing? Not really. This takes up a lot of my time, frankly. I spend a lot of my nights uh, that I could be, you know, watching TV or, or even reading my Bible or doing, uh, you know, a million other things I spend doing this. Not because I just enjoy spending time on this, but because I do care about you guys. Are you going to? Probably not. But I think that it's still worthwhile taking the time to invest in your guys' lives like this. So thank you for listening. For those of you who are in Christ... Go with God and be blessed. For those of you who are not, I pray that you would come to an understanding of the true Christ of history, the only genuine Savior of mankind. Amen.